United States, but regardless of which side of the border you're on, you're in it for all the right reasons today. You're thinking of the military, the troops, servicemen and women that have sacrificed so much for our freedom and for us to do what we like to do on a daily basis. In my case, be able to work every day as a sports handicapper and better as I've been able to do for the last eight, 10 years uh, and counting. Um, it's always a day where you've got to take pause and really thank and, and commemorate and salute uh, all of those uh, fighting for our freedoms uh, abroad, uh, American military personnel, Canadian military personnel, and really military, uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, anyone that serves uh, in uh, for, 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 for the country, for a country, uh, they deserve our respect. They deserve uh, our uh, a moment at least for one day out of the year to uh, reflect on the lives that have been lost uh, in terms of uh, servicemen and women, but also thanking them for the work that they do for us throughout the year. So uh, just wanted to say that, that on a day like this, we're absolutely thinking of the men and women uh, who are uh, fighting for our freedoms, fighting for our countries and our sovereignty, really, and, and be able to allow us to uh, live our daily lives the way we do. So uh, Remembrance Day, Veterans Day, salute to those who have served uh, in uh, the armed forces and, and protect us and certainly uh, allow us to live the lives we do. All right, let's go to... Uh, the rest of the show, um, we're going to end up talking about last night in the MAC. Uh, we'll preview the Colorado State Boise State college football game for Thursday and the Colts Titans Thursday night football in the NFL to begin the show, uh, to begin the NFL week, I should say, tomorrow. So let's quickly look back on the MAC from last night. Kent State destroying Bowling Green. Uh, that game wasn't even close. Um, just a dominant performance from Dustin Crum in the Kent State offense. They roll past Bowling Green 62-24. to The game flies over the total with room to spare. An easy point spread cover as well for the Golden Flashes. Uh, very impressive win for them. It really shows you, though, more about how bad Bowling Green is. How about the Ohio Bobcats struggling to win straight up? Not just cover, which they didn't even come close to doing uh, as 27-point home favorites. They struggled to win straight up uh, last night against the uh, Akron Zips, who have been a bottom feeder in this conference, and yet they were in the mix and threatening to p possibly win the game into the fourth quarter. Uh, you got to give Akron credit. You know, Gibson, their young quarterback, showed you a little something, showed you a little moxie, threw the ball decently, was able to run the football a little bit. The defense wasn't, you know, the sieve that it's been most of the season. They were able to came up, come up with some stops and get the ball back for their offense. When it was all said and done, they just couldn't put up enough points on the board. But you definitely have to like the direction that the Akron Zips program might be heading in. You know, the competitive in, de in defeat last night, going to be something to watch out for because Akron's been obviously a point spread disaster going back to last year. Uh, they're obviously still looking for their first win uh, in the last two years, but that point spread cover last night, is it a sign that maybe Akron might finally be starting to outperform their power rating, which is about as low as it can possibly be? That's going to be something to watch for uh, moving forward uh, in the weeks to come. Uh, the Buffalo Bulls uh, flexed their muscles last night, showing you why they are one of the teams to beat in the MAC. Uh, they annihilate Miami, uh, Ohio Red Hawks, 42 to 10. Easy point spread cover for Buffalo. The game barely stays under the total. It looked like it was easily going to be an under uh, in the first half, and especially the first quarter, which was scoreless. But the points started to fly. And then all of a sudden in the fourth quarter, you're, you're thinking the over is probably the favorite to get the money. But Miami decides to kick a field goal inside the five-yard line. Uh, and then they just show no urgency with the ball. Uh, the, the last time they had it, they go for it on fourth down. They basically run it right into the Buffalo defensive line and get stopped. So if you had the over, you go from thinking you didn't have a chance to thinking, oh, we're probably going to cash this to uh, not so fast. No, you're not going to cash this. And the game does stay under the total. So frustrating if you had the over a little bit uh, in that game last night with the Red Hawks and the Bulls. All right, let's go to Thursday football. We've got two games, Mountain West college football action and the first game of week 10 in the NFL. 
Let's start with college. Colorado State, Boise State in the Mountain West on the blue turf. Boise State looking to bounce back after a drubbing that they took at the hands of that powerhouse BYU last week. Uh, Boise State, 14-point home favorites here in Boise, Albertson Stadium, the blue turf. A total 61 and a half, 62 in this game. Who's going to be quarterback for Boise State? Who is it going to be? It could be one of three different quarterbacks. Is Hank Bachmeyer the original number one quarterback for this team? Is he finally going to be able to return? We don't know that. Jack Sears, who got injured early in the BYU game last week, the USC transfer, who had actually played pretty well in the start he got against Air Force the week before that. Is he going to be good to go? He's questionable. We don't know that. And Brian Harson's being playing coy and not giving you much in terms of information as to who is going to be a starting quarterback here against Colorado State. So it's, that's why it's tricky. To What are you going to get in terms of Boise State's quarterback situation? So it could be Cade Finnegan again uh, at quarterback, the third string uh, QB for Boise, who was obviously not great last week. It was a tough situation against a really, really good Boise State team. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking Boise State scoring points in this game, regardless of who's at quarterback. Obviously, if it's Bachmeyer and he returns, then they really should be able to put up points because Colorado State's defense has struggled against uh, against uh, Fresno State uh, in the loss. And even in the victory at home against Wyoming last week, they gave up big chunk plays. And Steve Adazio's team does not look any better on the defensive side of the football as they did last year, and they were horrible defensively last year. They don't look like they're a whole lot better this year. They're not getting a pass rush. The secondary, you can shred them in the passing game. So if Bachmeyer is back for Boise State, he's going to do damage. And if he doesn't play and Jack Sears is able to play, he's also going to do damage because I think I've seen enough from Jack Sears. We know he's a guy with pedigree, with talent, with ability. You don't get uh, recruited by USC if you can't play. Uh, and even though he uh, transferred from there to Boise, he's going up against a very subpar defense. He should be able to make some plays against them. Now, if it is Cade Finnegan at quarterback for Bo Boise State, who struggled last week against BYU, maybe then you have a few more concerns about just exactly how well this Boise State offense is going to operate here. But even if it's Finnegan, who is the you know the worst of the three quarterbacks, that's why he's the third stringer. He's going to have a full week of practice. He's probably the one guy that's fully able to practice this week leading up to this game. And the BYU defense is a whole hell of a lot better than the Colorado State defense. So I think even if it's Cade Finnegan, the third string QB for Boise, he can go out there, move the ball. The O-line for Boise State's really good. It has been really good so far this season. Uh, they could be able to win that battle in the trenches against Colorado State's defense. On the flip side, though, Colorado State on the offensive side of the football Adazio got with the program last week. He went with Patrick O'Brien instead of Todd Centeo. I think he was being loyal to Centeo, knowing that he had him as a quarterback at Temple many years ago. The Centeo couldn't play. I mean, he could throw the ball. He was terrible. He was wayward with his passes, uh, and it was the right decision to go with O'Brien. And sure enough, the Colorado State offense has a very good game last week against a pretty solid Wyoming defense uh, in the victory. So you would expect O'Brien to be back here this week. Uh, Boise State got absolutely torched through the air, and O'Brien can throw it. So this sets up as a high-scoring game to me. I would look over the total with Colorado State and Boise State. From a side perspective, you know, after that kind of blowout loss, I'm reluctant to step in front of Boise State here. You know they're going to be in an angry mo in an angry mood, but the long-term numbers, Boise State is home favorites here on this blue turf. They're ugly, and they're ugly enough that I'm staying off Boise, but I lean that way. Uh, from a side perspective. All right, let's go to the NFL game, Thursday night football. This is a good one. Uh, you've got the uh, six and two Titans, the five and three Colts. This is essentially first place in the AFC South uh, on the line temporarily. Uh, temporary of uh, uh, hold of first place, I should say, in the division. Uh, we've seen some Indianapolis money here. Tennessee was one and a half, two point favorites most of the week. Uh, and now we're seeing pick them and even minus one with Indy as a slight road favorite in some spots, 48 and a half, 49, the total. Maybe it's reaction to T.Y. Hilton being cleared to play because T.Y. Hilton is going to be back uh, for uh, the Indianapolis Colts at wide receiver. And boy, do they need some skill position weapons for Phillip Rivers. I think that's been one of the things that has been disappointing uh, about the Colts this season 
is that I just don't see a great deal of skill position talent on this group. You know, the, the running back position with Jonathan Taylor, who's had fumble problems, Jordan Wilkins, Naheem Hines with Marlon Mack out, the running game has suffered. T.Y. Hilton's not had a great year, even when he has been healthy and on the field. That's why I think people are overreacting a little bit to Hilton playing in this game. He hasn't had a great season. He hasn't had a great deal of chemistry and rapport so far with Phillip Rivers and the Colts passing game. You know, Zach Paschal, Michael Pittman, Marcus Johnson. I don't love this Colts receiving core. They miss Paris Campbell badly. He was one of the best receivers they had. He's been out for the last few weeks. And now Jack Doyle, a reliable tight end is going to be out moving forward for the Colts due to injury. So, you know, there's questions with this Colts offense and with Phillip Rivers, who continues to make costly mistakes every week. I think the offensive line for the Colts has regressed a little bit this season and not played as well uh, in pass protection. But those are all concerns. And when you look at Tennessee or the Colts defense, the numbers look good on paper against the run, against the pass. Overall defensive numbers, pretty solid but they've faced a slew of weak offenses. They've faced a slew of weak quarterbacks, below average quarterbacks, the two best quarterbacks and offenses they've played. You could argue are Cleveland, Baker Mayfield, and Baltimore last week, Lamar Jackson, and the Colts go 0-2 straight up in ATS in those games. Now you're facing Ryan Tannehill, and Ryan Tannehill is a borderline top five quarterback in the NFL this season, the way he's playing. Forget about his career. I'm talking about this season. He's a borderline top five quarterback. He's played that well for the Titans. He's finding A.J. Brown. He's finding Jonu Smith, Adam Humphreys, uh, Corey Davis down the field. He's got Derrick Henry, one of the best running backs in the NFL to rely on. And Tennessee, after two straight losses to Pittsburgh and Cincinnati, they didn't play well. But, boy, they have really got their game back against Chicago. Don't be fooled by the final score. Chicago scored a bunch of points late when the game was already out of reach. But it was domination for the Titans. And what was very promising for the Titans is the defense that has really struggled for much of the season finally got some pass rush going. Uh, the secondary was good. They forced a couple of turnovers. That was better, much better, out of a Titans defense that has really struggled uh, at times this season. Now you're facing the Colts, and this defense now not only getting a little bit healthier, you know, they also got healthier in the secondary last week against Chicago. It made a difference. Now that defense has some confidence back, and you're facing Phillip Rivers, who's mistake-prone, who's now going on the road and doing so on a short week. That's significant because if you've been paying attention and keeping an eye on this little trend that's developed, with Tom Brady, with Drew Brees, with Phillip Rivers, with the older quarterbacks in the NFL, the guys that are in their late 30s, early 40s, when they play on a short week and they play with less than seven days following the previous game, they're not playing well. Look at Brady on Sunday night against the Saints when he played Monday night against the Giants, Sunday night against the Saints. He didn't play that well uh, overall. When you look at even when Tampa Bay lost to Chicago earlier this season, Brady again on a short week, didn't play that well. We've seen Drew Brees a, a time earlier this season on a short week, have one of his uh, weaker games as well. And now Phillip Rivers, same thing for him, short week, Sunday to Thursday on the road, outdoors as well. There's also been a little bit of a pattern developing where Phillip Rivers isn't playing in a controlled indoor environment. He doesn't play as well. That's not going to be the case here. A lot of people loving the Colts, betting the Colts. We've seen this line move. None of that money is mine. It's Titans or pass for me on Thursday night football. All right, that'll wrap up this edition of the Pub Sports Radio Ian Cameron Sports Report for Wednesday, November 11th. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I tried not to mention the subscription service every day. You guys know I have that. Um, it's on Twitter, at Bobano, but I do want to mention it just today because – College basketball is coming up in two weeks. That's part of my all sports service, which is $75 a month. And if you want to subscribe, you can email Bobano350 at gmail.com. And the NFL has been outstanding for me this season. Uh, overall, 27 and 10 the last three weeks uh, in the NFL. It's been an incredible run the last three weeks for me, 27 and 10 uh, in the NFL uh, over the last three weeks, a solid 76 and 60 on the entire NFL season so far. Really, really solid NFL season. One of my better ones, and uh, proud to uh, say it. Uh, college football has been a little more hit or miss. No, uh, no uh, denying that. But uh, NFL has been absolutely outstanding. 
Uh, if you're interested in Ian Cameron capping with NFL, college football, and of course, college basketball, starting in two weeks, send an email to bobano350 at gmail.com. That'll wrap up this edition of the show. Thank you to everyone for tuning in on a daily basis. Tomorrow's a busy day, as it always is for me on Thursdays here on the Pub Sports Radio YouTube channel. The Ian Cameron Football Frenzy Show live 1 p.m. Eastern, as it is every Thursday, breaking down every Week 10 game in the NFL on that show live tomorrow at 1 p.m. And, of course, I'll have the daily uh, Ian Cameron Sports Report as well. On the Ian Cameron Sports Report tomorrow, we'll look at the Friday college football games. We've got three of them on Friday. We'll preview them all. Florida Atlantic, Florida International, uh, Iowa, Minnesota, and also East Carolina, Cincinnati. We'll take a look at all of those games on Friday on tomorrow's edition of the show. So until then, have a great night. Have a great Wednesday night. Enjoy the game, Mac games taking place and good luck and i will see you again tomorrow on thursday for another edition of the pub sports radio ian cameron sports report